Now we will have our gospel reading, which this morning will be read by Josephine Anna. And then we, that will be followed by Jack, who will be speaking to us. Today's gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got to the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Learning to trust in Jesus. As I wrote this, and as it's being filmed today, the sun's blazing, and it's really, really hot. The thought of a storm coming up over the horizon couldn't be further away from our thoughts at the minute. Here in the UK at least though, a thundery storm almost always interrupts a few, interrupts our fun in the sun and brings us back to our more familiar drizzly overcast skies. Today's reading helps us to think about what it means to trust in Jesus, even in the most frightening situations. When I think about learning to trust in Jesus, I think of life as a journey of faith. I think most of us would, would agree that our faith can waver from time to time. Actually thinking of it, a wavering faith, reminds me of a story that I heard when I was a kid. I can't recall all of it, or even who told me, but one part's always stuck in my mind. There was an old preacher, and he was out in the woods, and he came across a bear. And the bear chased him, and chased him, and it chased him. And uh, all of a sudden, the old man couldn't run anymore, and he uh, scurried up a tree like a little squirrel. And when he got to the top of the tree, the old preacher, looking down at the bear below, he was terrified and he looked up at the sky and he said, Lord, if you don't help me, for heaven's sake, please don't help the bear. For many of us, the strength of our faith seems to vary from time to time, depending on the situation we find ourselves in from day to day. Some days we wake up and everything seems rosy, it's easy to be content and say, I'm happy here where I am. Thank you, Lord. I'll stop here for a moment if you don't mind. Other times life is going at a fairly steady pace. Things crop up, we pray, we thank God, and we leave it at that. And there are other days when everything seems to be totally up in the air. The situation seems desperate, and we can choose to either look at it in one or two ways. We can look at ourselves totally lost, totally helpless, unable to make a difference and frustrated because we can't. Or we can, call, we can call upon the one who can help us, the one who says reliably and constantly throughout the scriptures, do not fear, do not be afraid. I am with you, I love you, trust in me. We can choose to put our faith ahead of our fear. The early Christians used to use metaphors such as on the way or on the road to refer to the Christian life, that journey of faith. You'll see these used a lot throughout the Gospels. 
Today, just as then, we encounter storms from time to time that seem to hinder us on our journey. But I think these storms are the things that eventually help us to cement our faith as it develops along that way. So often these storms, these times of fear, grief, sickness, or some other upheaval, cause us to doubt, just as the disciples doubted in today's reading. Despite having been with Jesus for some time and seeing his miraculous works, when they see him walking on the water, they're immediately gripped with fear, believing him to be a ghost at one point. Peter, in a panic, shouts, Lord, if it is you, take me on the water with you, and then proceeds to walk on the water to Jesus. It doesn't explicitly say what happened to Peter, but it seems in, in that moment he lost his faith. Amazed at what was happening, he begins to doubt again, knowing that what is happening is far beyond the capabilities of flesh. He begins to sink. Lord, save me, he shouts, and Jesus immediately does. Personally, I find it encouraging that despite Peter's momentary doubt, even with all the evidence before him, Jesus is there the very moment that he's called upon. As it says in Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This theme is shown throughout the Bible. It's those people that put their tr faith in God, their trust in God, that prosper, and those people that put their, tr their trust and their faith in themselves that fail. The people that prosper, prosper even when the odds are completely stacked against them. Think about it. When the angel came to Mary and told her what was going to happen, she must have been shell-shocked. She's going to have this baby out of wedlock. Joseph won't want anything to do with her. Her family, her community, they'll all disown her. She'll be an outcast. But the angel tells her not to be afraid, and Mary puts all of her trust in God. When Paul was thrown from his horse at Damascus, the, vis the vision he had meant that he'd need to leave the whole of his life behind him, his family, his position, everything that he'd ever worked for and been in life, to follow the man that he'd persecuted and to spread his gospel throughout the known world. An unnerving change of direction, sure, that he trusted in God. When Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt through the desert, he must have wondered whether what he was doing was safe and the right thing for his people. But he trusted in God and he led the Israelites out of the shackles of slavery. And what did all these people have in common? They trusted in God. They trusted in his works and in his deeds. They put their faith over their fears. Even in my case, I put off coming to church for years and years and years. But after a tragedy in the family, I decided I just couldn't put it off anymore. I put my trust in Jesus, and I can't tell you how much has changed since then. I wonder if you can think of a time in your life where you stuck your neck out and put all of your trust in Jesus. To trust in Jesus is to have faith that despite our fears, despite the trials and tribulations that come along the way, he will always be there with us. When we look at life's storms, our fears and our toils through the lens of Jesus, and when we trust in him, everything becomes that little bit lighter. When we look at Jesus, we see a model of faithfulness, faithful to the Father and to each of us. It's easy to forget that in today's reading, Jesus had not long heard about the death of his cousin and colleague, for want of a better word, John the Baptist. It really must have been beginning to hit home for him, the danger that he was in and what he was heading to. A similar fate, maybe. It makes me think of that scene in the Garden of Gethsemane where in Matthew 26, Jesus fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He understands the gravity of the situation. He knows that he will suffer, but he puts his trust in the father and he submits to the father's will. In learning to trust in Jesus, we're accepting that life won't always be easy. There will be storms, there will be trials, and there'll be pain. But in putting our trust in him and following his will, we begin to realize that with him by our side, we really can't fail. In these times of COVID-19 and the uncertainty surrounding that, each and every one of us is going through our own kind of storm. 
in our own lives. Feelings of anxiety, feelings of isolation, grief, loss, restlessness. People who've lost their independence, people who've lost their livelihoods and others who've lost their loved ones. And in and amongst these people, there'll be others who are struggling in a crisis of faith. And to those people, I would say, trust in him, speak to him, and he'll be there. Even when we stumble in our faith from time to time, we can rest assured that Jesus remains faithful until the very end. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can trust you always. Thank you that from the very beginning until the end of time, you were always there for us. Lord, we pray for those people at the moment who really are struggling in this awful storm, that they continue to put their trust in you and that your presence in their lives would be magnified. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen.